The nose is one of the most noticeable features on the human face and plays a vital role in both appearance and function. Beyond its role in breathing, it contributes to our sense of smell, influences the way we speak, and helps protect our respiratory system by filtering and warming the air we breathe. Despite its small size compared to other organs, the nose is incredibly complex, containing a combination of bone, cartilage, mucous membranes, and nerve endings that all work together seamlessly. To understand how this organ functions, it is important to explore its structure, the parts that make it up, and how each of those parts contributes to its purpose. While the external appearance of the nose is what most people recognize, its internal components are far more intricate and fascinating. These parts not only allow us to smell, but also serve as a first line of defense against harmful particles in the air. People who are not from a biology background might think of the nose simply as the place where air enters and exits the body, but it does much more than that. It acts like a natural air filter, humidifier, and even contributes to how our voices sound. This detailed explanation will walk you through the different components of the nose and how they function, using clear and simple language that anyone can understand. Parts of the nose The nose is generally divided into two main parts, the external nose and the internal nasal cavity. The external nose is the part that is visible on the face, while the internal nasal cavity is the part that is located inside the skull. The internal structure is much larger than it appears from the outside and connects to the sinuses, throat, and even the ears in some ways. The external nose includes the nostrils, also called nares, the nasal tip, and the bridge. The nasal skeleton underneath is made of a combination of bone and cartilage, which gives the nose its shape and structure. Cartilage is a flexible tissue that is softer than bone, which allows for a degree of movement and flexibility. The internal nose, or nasal cavity, is divided into two halves by a thin wall called the nasal septum. Each half of the nasal cavity has its own passage for air to flow through. Inside the nasal cavity, there are important structures called turbinates, also called conchi, which are curved bony plates that help to warm, moisten, and clean the air as it passes through. Within the nose, there are also the olfactory receptors, which are responsible for detecting smell. These receptors are located at the top of the nasal cavity and send signals to the brain via the olfactory nerve. In addition to this, the nose contains mucous membranes that produce mucus, which helps trap dust and pathogens. External nose. The external part of the nose is what you see on the face. It is made up of skin, muscles, connective tissues, cartilage, and bone. It starts from the root of the nose, which is located between the eyes and ends at the tip or apex of the nose. The bridge of the nose is the upper portion that is supported by nasal bones, while the lower portion is supported by cartilage. The nostrils, or nares, are the two openings at the bottom of the nose that allow air to enter and exit. These nostrils are surrounded by wing-like structures called the alae, which are composed mainly of cartilage and covered by skin. The tip of the nose, known as the apex, is soft and mobile because it is mostly cartilage. The overall shape of the external nose varies from person to person and is often influenced by genetic factors. The external nose also includes a thin strip of skin called the columella, which separates the two nostrils from each other. This visible part of the nose plays an important role in aesthetics and facial symmetry, but also serves as the entryway for air to reach the inside of the nose. Nasal septum the nasal septum is the thin vertical wall that separates the left and right nasal cavities. It is made of both bone and cartilage. The front part of the septum is cartilage, which is soft and flexible, while the back part is made of bone and provides structural support. A properly positioned septum ensures that both sides of the nose receive equal airflow. However, in many people, the septum may be slightly off-center. This condition is known as a deviated septum, and it can lead to breathing problems, frequent nosebleeds, or sinus infections if severe. The nasal septum also supports the structure of the nose and helps maintain its shape. It is lined with mucous membrane that contains tiny hair-like structures called cilia, which help move mucus and trapped particles toward the throat, where they can be swallowed or expelled. Nasal cavity The nasal cavity is the large, hollow space behind the nose. It extends from the nostrils to the back of the throat. This cavity is lined with a mucous membrane that helps to trap dust, germs, and other harmful particles. This membrane also keeps the inside of the nose moist and helps warm and humidify the air before it reaches the lungs. Inside the nasal cavity are several structures called turbinates, or nasal conchae. 
These are bony projections covered with soft tissue. There are usually three turbinates on each side, the superior, middle, and inferior turbinates. These structures increase the surface area inside the nose, which allows for better filtering and conditioning of the air. The nasal cavity also contains small openings that connect to the paranasal sinuses. These are air-filled spaces in the bones of the skull that help reduce the weight of the head, produce mucus, and affect the sound of our voice. The sinuses include the frontal, maxillary, ethmoid, and sphenoid sinuses. Turbinates Turbinates, or nasal conchae, are curved bones inside the nasal cavity that are covered in a thick layer of mucous membrane. They are responsible for increasing the surface area within the nose, which helps in conditioning the air that we breathe. The superior turbinate is the smallest and sits highest in the nasal cavity, while the middle and inferior turbinates are larger and sit below. The turbinates play a crucial role in filtering and warming the air. As air passes over the turbinates, it is cleaned by the mucus and warmed by the blood vessels within them. This process ensures that the air entering the lungs is at the right temperature and free of harmful particles. When the turbinates become swollen due to allergies or infections, it can lead to nasal congestion and difficulty breathing. In some cases, enlarged turbinates may need to be treated with medication or even surgery to restore normal airflow. Olfactory region at the top of the nasal cavity is a special area called the olfactory region, which contains the receptors responsible for our sense of smell. These receptors are part of the olfactory epithelium, a thin layer of tissue that detects odor molecules in the air. When we breathe in, air carrying different smells travels up to this area, and the receptors send signals to the olfactory bulb, a structure located just above the nasal cavity in the brain. The olfactory bulb then processes these signals and sends them to the brain where the smell is identified. This sense of smell is closely connected to our sense of taste. That's why food seems tasteless when you have a blocked nose. The olfactory system is delicate and can be damaged by infections, injuries, or even aging, leading to a reduced or complete loss of smell, a condition known as anosmia, mucous membranes, and cilia. The inner lining of the nose is covered with mucous membranes, which secrete mucus to keep the nasal cavity moist. This moisture is essential for trapping dust, bacteria, and other particles that could be harmful if they reach the lungs. The mucus is sticky and helps hold onto these invaders until they can be removed. Along with mucus, the nose also contains cilia, which are microscopic hair-like structures that move in a wave-like motion. These cilia push the mucus and trapped particles toward the back of the throat, where they can be swallowed and destroyed by stomach acid. This cleaning system is very effective and works continuously to protect our respiratory system. When we are sick, this process can slow down or become overwhelmed, leading to a stuffy nose or sinus infection. Drinking water and using humidifiers can help keep the mucous membranes healthy and functioning properly. Paranasol sinuses the paranasal sinuses are air-filled spaces within the bones around the nose. They are connected to the nasal cavity by small channels. These sinuses include the frontal sinus in the forehead, maxillary sinus under the eyes, ethmoid sinus between the eyes, and sphenoid sinus behind the eyes. These sinuses help reduce the weight of the skull, improve voice resonance, and produce mucus that drains into the nasal cavity. They are lined with the same type of mucous membrane as the nasal cavity, so they also help trap and remove harmful particles. When the sinuses become inflamed due to infection or allergies, it results in a condition called sinusitis, which can cause facial pain, pressure, and difficulty breathing through the nose. Healthy sinuses are normally filled with air and allow mucus to drain easily, but blocked sinuses can lead to discomfort and infection blood supply and nerves. The nose has a rich blood supply which helps warm the air as it passes through. Several arteries supply blood to the nose, including the facial artery and branches of the internal and external carotid arteries. Because of this rich blood flow, the nose can bleed easily, especially in dry conditions or due to trauma. The nose is also connected to many nerves, which allow it to sense touch, pain, temperature, and smell. The most important nerve related to smell is the olfactory nerve, cranial nerve I. Other nerves provide sensation to the skin of the nose and its internal structures, including the trigeminal nerve, which is responsible for facial sensations. These nerves play an important role in triggering reflexes such as sneezing, which helps clear irritants from the nose. The nose is sensitive to many types of stimuli, including strong smells, dust, and changes in temperature function, and importance. The nose is not just an entry point for air, it is a multifunctional organ that plays an essential role in protecting and supporting the respiratory system. Its design ensures that the air we breathe is clean, warm, and moist, which is important for lung health. It also acts as the first line of defense against airborne threats like dust, bacteria, and viruses. The sense of smell provided by the nose helps us enjoy food, 
detect hazards like smoke or gas leaks, and even triggers emotional memories. The shape of the nasal passages also influences the sound of our voice by acting as a resonating chamber. This is why people sound different when they have a blocked nose due to a cold. Overall, the nose is a complex and vital part of the body that works constantly, even though we may not always be aware of its functions. From filtering air to detecting smells, its roles are deeply integrated with other systems of the body. Finally, understanding the anatomy of the nose gives us a deeper appreciation of how this small but powerful organ contributes to our daily lives. It is far more than a facial feature. It is a carefully designed system that manages airflow, detects scents, protects the lungs, and adds resonance to our voice. With its external and internal components working together, the nose ensures that every breath we take supports our health and well-being. Whether you're trying to understand nasal health or simply want to know more about how your body works, knowing the nose's structure and function is a valuable step toward better awareness and self-care. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed exploring human anatomy with us, don't forget to subscribe to Inside Us for more easy-to-understand videos related to human anatomy and organ system. See you in the next one.